Die Sprachübertragung beginnt jetzt. Alle Teilnehmer befinden sich im Zuhörermodus. Hello and welcome to today's special webinar for JFT Brokers uh, topic Behavioral Finance and how to use it in your trading. I welcome you. This is Jens still speaking and exclusively presenting this event to you for JFT Brokers. So one one second, I just want to have a look whether the what should be okay, um, whether audio is, is fine, but, but everything seems to be okay. So yeah, um, a very, very um, um, uh, great topic to be honest. So one of my, my favorite topics in trading in general. So over the years, uh, I um, came more and more to the conclusion that trading psychology um, is the most important aspect in trading. I'm not saying it's the only important aspect, um, you may have uh, listened to my uh, webinar last week. It was on um, Thursday 2, and um, it was on the three columns of profitable trading. And here it um, not just came down to trading psychology, but also to um, uh, risk and money management and on um, having an advantage trading strategy. And uh, nevertheless, uh, trading psychology all in all is, is one of my favorite topics since I, I have well, let's say plenty of experience in holding speeches in front of also large audiences. So I've, I've been a speaker on uh, several um, uh, big events or trading events here in Germany especially. Um, and uh, I have to say that I had topics um, which, well, the topics, they, they, they covered a broad range. Um, and um, all in all, it was always special when I was capable of talking about uh, something in terms of trading psychology, especially when playing little games, let's say, with the audience and showing them um, in detail on uh, how or what I'm, in this case, um, I'm talking about. So some of you who may now listen to this um, have already played those games probably, some of you haven't, but I'll, uh, I'll, um, I promise that it will be uh, something special today too with the little game I've prepared and um, I always um, say, well, be honest here to yourself. So um, be, be really honest to yourself. I think this is, uh, this is key to, to be a good trader. At the end, um, you, you have to, uh, yeah, you, you, you are your own boss. If you're a trader, if, you, if you're making money trading the markets or if you, if you plan to, to do this for a living, um, you're your own boss and uh, you're the only one um, who who has to um, justify or in whom you have to justify what you're doing and um, I think there it doesn't matter um, or it doesn't make sense to, to, to lie to yourself since uh, lying when it comes to trading is um, always uh, yeah it's always a clear sign of you're you're doing something wrong respectively you have a great chance of probably going going broke broke over uh, the the mid to long term and um, here in this case so behavioral finance gives gives some 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 very special insights some very good ideas on on uh, what and how to uh, behave in certain spots why we behave like we behave let's say and um, yeah, so this will be the topic for the next um, around 60 minutes first of all as usual here the uh, risk disclaimer and then we want to we want to start I just um, recognize that unfortunately the presentation is not perfect so um, you can already see everything I'm I I, uh, I wrote down here but I, I think this this won't matter um, as, as this this won't matter at all so the first question is what is behavioral finance about and it's a really exciting question coming up and um, some of you uh, might have wondered the same um, why do retail traders do what they do so what I'm talking about is here why do they hold too long on losing positions and cutting winners short um, or cutting winners too short let's say especially since there are many educational pieces uh, in the internet in books, um, um, probably also on DVD and wherever you, you might look. Um, all in all, we can we can say there are many many pieces out there on educational um, 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 trading education. So um, uh, which are emphasizing let winners run and cut losers short. So everyone knows this um, a rule here in trading. But all in all, many retail traders seem to have big problems to do exactly that. Um, some might say, well, probably uh, they are lacking a profitable trading strategy. 
this could be the case and um, if we now um, had let's say three hours of time we could um, definitely find a way how to uh, build a bridge here but all in all it's um it's it's uh it's it's easier than that it's um ooh, i'm sorry Opa. um it's easier than that it's um it's uh the the reason for that why that is is because we are human that's that's all that's that's the only reason here and um so what we know is that psychology and trading plays a crucial role that's something i already said during the uh, introduction um, and here emotions come into play. So emotions play a very important role. And um, what I presented to you already last week, um, or if, you, if you've seen the, the, re the recording of this event, um, was that here um, emotions are in fact crucial. And some people, some traders, some coaches probably also, um, some professional traders, you might have heard them saying something like, well, if you're getting emotionally in your trading, you have a big problem since you can't allow any emotions in trading. I think this is, this is completely false. It's completely false since we are humans and emotions are in fact crucial to uh, come to a certain level, which is, um, or which I introduced to you last week um, um, with the, oh, I forgot, it's, no, I forgot. What's the model? Jux Dotson. Yeah, I'm sorry. So it's Jux Dotson model, and um, that was the the uh, level of of um, the let's call it the the the, the optimal um, uh, where, where you perform perfectly optimally. This is the moment where you're um, um, having um, uh, when you're trading in your zone. This is something which was introduced by I think it was Mark Douglas in one of his uh, uh, trading books on trading psychology, and um, so emotions are crucial. As it is, for example, for um, um, a soccer player, it is crucial to warm up before an important game. So no football player out there, no soccer player goes on the field and says, "Okay, now let's play." I mean, it's the Champions League final, so let's play. But no one will do this, as as you will understand that if you go to the gym, for example, you have to warm up before. If you do not warm up, you get you get trouble. Some might say, "Well, but what happens if I warm up and I'm completely exhausted afterwards?" Then I'd um, say, "Well, you did something completely wrong since you overpaced in your warm up." And warming up doesn't mean to exhaust yourself, but making sure that you prepare your muscles, let's say, if you go to the gym, you prepare your muscles to perform well. And um, this is exact, the exact same thing here when it comes to trading and where emotions play such, a, um, such an um, enormous, important role. You have to make sure that you're in a state where you can perform extremely well, which means you have to make sure that you're feeling comfortable when sitting in front of your PC. Just, just imagine the following. You, um, I don't know, uh, you, you just um, 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 woke up and feel completely... Uh, completely down. So you're completely uh, distressed for whatever reason. Um, so I think I'd, I'd say probably 70 to 80 percent of the people, especially during the winter months, um, can exactly feel what I'm talking about right now. So usually I'm a very, very happy person. I'm always very positive. I try to be really positive. If I'm not positive at all, I say, well, you waste your, your lifetime here in this moment when you're, when you're frustrated since it doesn't make sense to be frustrated. Just imagine you're frustrated for one minute. That means, on the other hand, that you're losing 60 seconds of having the chance of being a happy person and enjoy life. Um, it might, say, uh, it might sound uh, ridiculous now, but this is exactly the thing. Um, 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 this, this is, this is when, when, you, when you break it down, what life comes to. And um, so now let's imagine it's the winter months. You get up in the morning and you're completely devastated. You're completely down and you have no real intention to do anything at all. Now, nevertheless, you, let's say you're a trader, you're a professional trader, and you have to make sure that you're performing well, which means um, you have to warm up somehow. And Every person has its own single way to warm up here. One have, has to have a coffee, the other has to have a nice breakfast with his wife or with his ch children, or one might say, well, I have to uh, go and walk around uh, the block. Some might do some, some, some sports in the morning, uh, but just to wake up and to get to your, let's call it, perfect arousal level to this to this zone to your comfort zone the moment you sit in front of your pc and you're planning to trade means that you you have to make sure that you're really really in this state of mind that you're really 
positive in this moment and that you that you say okay well I want to perform well and you have to find questions you ask yourself and everything and that's why emotions are really really important um, and uh, and nothing which someone should do something against it since it's as I already said it's really important to have those emotions to be uh, at a certain level where you can perform well so and um, emotions nevertheless are more than that or not more than that but um, more often more often something uh, which is negatively um, affecting your trading which means anger and frustration is something so you know just imagine you just lost three trades in a row four trades in a row five times five, five trades in a row how do you feel uh, Completely down, I bet so. I mean, even if you know you have a trading pro um, strategy which is profitable, and even if you did everything right, and you had your signals, and you worked with your stop, you cut your losses short, nevertheless, you will feel down. That's, that's just the way it is. And everyone who traded with real money will exactly know that. Um, and now the funny thing is, that's by the way, something I want to uh, throw in right here. Um, if you win the money back, you don't feel as happy as you felt down before. So if you write it down, just just do the following exa um, 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 uh, example or, or um, the following test with you in the future. Just say, well, write down how you feel after a losing trade, and then write exactly down how you feel. And now, if you had a winning trade, write down how you felt after this winning trade, and then compare those two. That's why you have to go in very um, um, uh, you have to have to write it down very detailed here. Um, and you will find out that when you lose, you feel way more down when, or in the moment you're winning as you feel up, no, as you feel up when you're winning, that's the way around. Um, so anger and frustration are two of the main um, um, emotions you will, uh, you will, you will face when, when trading the markets. Fear, fear of, of loss. So just imagine you're, you're um, I'm going long the DAX now or going short the Dow Jones or whatever market you may trade, um, I bet you fear that you will lose with this trade. One of the main reasons um, traders are unprofitable in the trading is because they have a deep fear of losing um, some of their money. Um, Self-confidence and ego. Just imagine you're not in a losing streak, but you're in a winning streak. How do you feel or how do you feel last time you went, I don't know, three, four times, um, you had three, four times uh, um, a winner in a row. How did you feel? I bet you felt great. I bet you felt you 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 felt great. That's something important. You felt great, but just imagine now you didn't feel as great as you felt down when you were losing. That's very important. The factor here, by the way, is around two. It's something very important to to probably write down now, since it will be topic um, in the next minutes. And um, you you feel you feel great. And the moment in the moment you you think. You, you are the king of the world, um, I bet this will be before one really devastating losing trade. That's the usual case. And I'm, I'm talking uh, about a, out of, of personal experience here. So I had plenty of those occasions where I just thought, well, I'm doing really great right now. And I just have a complete great read on the market and then bam. And you just lost the next two, three, four trades in a row. Um, and uh, no, not that the, that the winnings were all gone. Um, it was okay. It was still fine since you're working with a with a positive payoff ratio and everything, and you're still ahead. Since if you're um, I don't know if you have a hit rate of let's say 50% and you have a payoff ratio of two to one, which means your average winner is as twice as much as your loser. Well, you're still ahead. Nevertheless, you feel as if you're breaking even. Probably um, you're, you're feeling as if you're down, even though you're ahead after those five losses. Um, so nevertheless, self-confidence ego is a big topic here. Motivation, actionism. You have to, to make up your losses. Something we learn in school already. So if someone asks you, um, or no, not someone asks you, but, but um, just imagine you, you had a, a bad grade in, I don't know, mathematics or something. Um, you had a bad grade. You came home and uh, told your father, hey, Pops, um, I just, I just uh, failed in, in math. And, and he will look at you and say, well, next time, work harder, okay, learn. This is what you will do. So you start to buy books and you start to read everything on the topic you can. And you try to make as many ex um, 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 examples here as possible um, to, to somehow avoid the bad feeling you had after getting this bad grade last time. In trading, learning is crucial, yes. But if you start to say, okay, now I want to make, make up 
or make back my, my losses, well, you're nearly done. Since you start to overtrade, you start to trade setups which are not in accordance with your trading approach. And from there, um, you start to trade with a negative expected value. The negative expected value turns in losing money. And the higher you trade and the more you trade, the more money you will lose. And so you start to, to find yourself in uh, something we call vicious circle here. Um, so. Nevertheless, if we sum all this up, based on my personal experience, fear is one of the main topics and emotions in trading. This is the fear of losing money. And um, this is really true. So just imagine the following. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a trading coach and um, I'm working with people who are uh, willing to find their way in trading and um, who say, well, I've uh, made my fortune somewhere else and now I want to start trading the market since this is something uh, which was always exciting to me, very interesting to me. And um, they hire me as a trading coach and I say, okay, please let me profit from all your expertise. Let me show me how, how you trade the markets and, and, and what is it, um, what, what's important to look at here. Um, which are the important topics I have to cover to become a profitable trader myself. Now imagine the following, you have a guy here, an entrepreneur, he made seven figures without a problem and is now saying, okay, I want to trade really small um, and risking, let's say, 500 euros for one trade. This is compared to what he made on a day on an, and an hour um, when he was an entrepreneur was nothing. But he starts to get so emotional because of fearing to lose the money because, and now you can see that it's a, it's a gray area here, because of self-confidence and ego problems. So he can't, um, someone who is really successful is not, um, is more often, let's say, more often not capable of exacting, of exacting that he's on the wrong side of the trade. He's not exacting, exacting that um, there's a no to his opinion. He says, I'm long DAX, now the DAX is falling. DAX is not long, but it's short. And he starts to go, furious about this. He, he's looking at the charts, probably screaming at them, saying, go up, I told you, go up. Um, well, obviously, there's some, um, it's, it's not possible for, for him to, to influence the markets to go up or down. And it starts to get an ego problem here. And one main reason or one main driver is fear. He fears that there's a no to his personal opinion, and this is making him sick to his stomach. And um, so, Based on my personal experience, not just this experience, but all in all, if I combine everything, um, I'd say that fear is probably the main topic and the main emotion in trading, uh, which needs pe where people which need people to come over, and um, based on that, we get to see a so-called um, cognitive biases. So um, this means that this is systematically and flawed tendency when it comes to percipients remembering when you have to remember for example that's a really interesting thing so if you remember how um, uh, um, um, how, how, how big did you did you uh, um, did you uh, what's the word for this um, how big did you see the chance that Donald Trump becomes became becomes the next President of the United States if I ask you today you will say well the chances were definitely 50 50 if not bigger than that um, really? Was it so clear? Imagine one year back from now, Brexit. How, how big did you see the chances of a Brexit happening? The great thing in my job is, as, a, as in this case also an analyst, which is mar um, um, I'm doing market research, I, um, I write everything down, I think. And I can definitely tell you, um, I have a, um, a piece from last year in June, shortly before the Brexit, where it's clearly said, where I clearly say, I do not see the Brexit happening because of this and that reason. One other um, um, cognitive bias here, for example, saying that people do not want change. They fear change. Um, well, I completely failed, obviously. But if I now ask you, how, how likely did you, did you see the chances that Trump get, becomes the new US president? How likely did you see the chances for a Brexit happening? How likely did you see your last trade developing the way it developed? Um, you will definitely remember wrong. You will, you will definitely give it a higher chance um, um, of, of, of being on the right side than you gave the chance before. That's a, a classic example. That's a classic um, 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 test usually you can, you can see here. Um, thinking and judging um, is also two um, um, cognitive biases 
which which are um, yeah systemically and 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 flaw tendencies here, and um, all of them, all of those um, um, things here, without going into too much detail, since I want to show you some some charts here. Um, where you can find these uh, tendencies in, in, in the real life, in the real trading world, um, all of these, as these um, biases impact your trading in a negative way. That's something we can um, sum all this up here. Okay? And um, so this is a real problem. What you see here is uh, different equities and different currency pairs, so different assets. And um, obviously you can see this is a German, uh, German chart. It's the average winner. Um, compared to the average loser, average winner in blue and the average loser in, in red and in different markets. And what you can see is that consistently the red column is way bigger than the blue one. Um, this is really, really interesting to say um, since this is a, a chart here from in the time frame of the 1st of March 2014 until the, uh, until the, the uh, 31st of March 2015. I have the same chart in my book I wrote, and this is a chart in the book here um, with the same with the same um, columns, different different assets you're considering here, but um, the same columns here um, um, from their from their um, 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 ratio of average winners to average losers um, in the time frame from Q4 2009 till Q3 the end of Q3 2010. So the same time frame around one year. Um, but in a completely different time frame, but with the exact same result. So what this chart shows that consistently here, um, traders were cutting winners short. So the average winner was way below the average loser. And now we come to what I already um, said. What's what's going to be interesting here? The factor is nearly two. So if if you if you look at this here, for example, this means 20 pips on average the trader made here or the trade there's made here, um, trading the EURUSD, for example, and on average losing 40 pips. So it's not necessarily all the time two, but it's, it's um, on average. The, the ratio is one to two. What does it tell us? It tells us that while we um, definitely feel happy about a winning trade, we fear twice as devastated after losing trade. So we feel horrible. The moment we lose, um, let's say, 10 euros, it, it feels as if we as if we lost 20 that's that's the that's the simple one so to make up to make up the loss of 10 euros you need to make at least 20 euros okay now you can easily scale this up let's say you you go and, and say I'm losing 1,000 euros um, to make this up I need to make 2,000 euros to have the same positive feeling as I had the negative feeling when I lost the money and this is exactly what's shown here in this chart. So all in all, we can say, and the, the main reason for this is the cognitive biases. And it's, it is, um, the, the, the main reason for this is that we are just humans and we can't do anything about this. So many people really think they can do anything about this um, um, or, or something. I'm sorry, they can do something about this. So what I'm saying is um, also during coachings, I'm telling people, hey, um, I mean, we, we know now, I told you that it's very important to have an advantage profitable trading strategy, okay? So, and this is exactly what you know. And nevertheless, you will have a lot of trouble to trade this strategy the long term thanks to those cognitive biases, thanks to, to the fact that you're um, weighting, uh, um, losing trades way higher than you, uh, than you, than you uh, do um, um, winning trades, then you, then you appreciate winning trades. Um, and many people just say, no, it's not the case. And I say, well, it is the case, believe me. And they say, no, it's not the case. If I know that I have a profitable trading strategy, I'm just trading it and that's it. And I say, no, it's not that easy. Unfortunately, it's not. And they, they really, they believe that it, this is the case. I can, I can, or I'm talking about a lot of experience here from my end. I can tell you that even though I know I'm trading with a profitable approach, still I, I, um, I face this problem in my, in my daily trading. I, I, I really do. So it's not something which is, which is uh, making me sick since, since I know it's a clear tendency um, and it's, uh, it's, it's my brain um, doing this to me um, without a good reason for that. But 
I bet you can't do anything about this. And this is something which is clearly shown in this chart here. So now to make this a little more, um, a little more um, um, real for you, I have two games here. And um, those two are played independently from each other. So we are not combining them, we are just playing them once. Okay. Now the question is the following. We play game one. It's you have to choose between these two options. It's option one or option A. You get right here 900 euro from me. Okay, 900 euros right here. There you go. Or you have a 90% chance of getting 1,000 euros, but a 10% chance of getting nothing at all. So the question now is, which option you choose? And um, here I can say that the, the usual uh, answer is something around 70, 60 to 70 percent saying A, and so 30 to 40 percent say option B, which is completely fine. So now let's take game two. Also two options. Option one is you lose right here, you lose 900 euros and you have to give it to me. The second option is option B, you have a 90 percent chance of losing uh, 1,000 euros, but a 10 percent chance of losing nothing at all. Which option do you choose now? So obviously these two games are the same, one is winning, one is losing. So which option you choose in game two? And also here, the personal experience is, and I'm, I'm talking about a huge sample size here in this case, so just imagine me talking in front of an audience of around 200 people and, and raising their hands and doing this, I don't know, five, six, 10, 20 times, and I'm getting always the same results. This is really, this is, this is no joke. You get always the same results. In game two, it's around, 10, probably 20% option A, and around 80 to 90% is option B. So, and this is something really, really interesting, since this game perfectly shows what I just presented here in this chart before. Um, so, first of all, I have to say, um, we are playing here with the same expected value. So, in this case, the expected um, um, value in, in the winning case, option A, is 900 euros. So, you have no risk of losing, zero and you have a 900 euro uh, chance for 100% to get 900 euros. So the expected value here is 900, okay? So in the second, um, 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 uh, first game, but option B is, you have a 90% of getting 10, 000, uh, 1,000 euros, so it's 0 0.9 multiplied with 1,000, it's um, in this case 900, and here from you subtract 10% chance of getting nothing, which is 10% multiplied with zero, which is zero. So you have 900 euros. So the expected value in both cases is exactly the same. Second thing is here, game two, you lose right here 900 euros, same thing, it's 900 euros is the expected value, respectively minus 900 euros for you. Uh, and in this case, you have a 90% chance of losing 1,000. It's um, also minus 900, 0 0.9 multiplied with 1,000 and 10% of losing nothing, so it's 10% multiplied with zero, and uh, so you have also here the same expected value. Nevertheless, there's such a huge difference um, um, while, while or when choosing option A or option B, and it has something to do with um, a complete different behavior when it comes to losing, respectively when it comes to, to, to winning here. So in the case of winning, you take what you can get, okay? So in this case, you are not risking 10% um, 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 chance. So it's nine out of 10, you win 1,000, but one, one time out of 10, on average, you get nothing at all. So it's definitely better to say, okay, I take the 900. And this is exactly what you do here. On the other hand here, when it comes to losing, you're not saying I'm, I'm cutting the losers short. No, 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 no. I mean, I have a chance here of, of losing, uh, or of losing 90% 1,000 euros, yes, but, 10% of the cases, I'm losing nothing at all. And so I'm, I'm going home as if nothing ever happened. And this is exactly the same thing which is shown here. So when it comes to winners, you cut your winners short, you take what you can get right on the spot. And this is something which um, is going back for thousands of years when you just imagine we were um, living on trees, you know, and you, you had to make sure that, that you can get what you, what you, what you, what you need to, to, um, to feed your family and to make sure that you survive. That's, that's when it, what it all comes down here. And this is something which is still in our brain. The same thing here, 
and the moment um, where you say, hey, I mean, I'm losing nevertheless, so it doesn't matter. I lose. That's something which is clear here. You have to choose between two options. Both are losers. And in this case, well, why not, why not hoping? Why not hoping that I'm getting lucky here and hit those 10%? Um, why not? Completely understandable, but when it comes to trading, this is the main reason you will, you will um, in the long run, lose your money. Since this has, in this case, the, the expected value is, is in both cases the same. But in cases of trading, if you behave like this, you will make sure that your losers are on average way bigger than your winners, which needs to, uh, needs to be overcome here with a, with a high hit rate, which nearly no one can, uh, can generate. And even if, in this case, by the way, a chart I haven't uh, prepared for this event today, but um, even, even if you have a hit rate of 60%, you can easily calculate the expected value. And if the number you get is negative, well, it's just a matter of time when you when you go down. So what I'm not saying is that him um, that 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 trading approaches, trading strategies, generating a lots of, of of winners here, of, of small winners, and sometimes having a big loser, um, that they have to be unprofitable. So I bet out there there are several approaches which work perfectly, um, which nevertheless have to be managed. So you have to to really understand what you're doing. Someone who has no real control of himself respectively of the of the trading size he's trading um, will get a lot of problem even though in the in the hands of someone who's who knows what he's doing um, the strategy might uh, might uh, be something highly profitable okay so um, nevertheless all in all I'd say people have to make sure that they somehow overcome their let's call it loss aversion here they fear of losing and make sure that the average winners get bigger than the average losers since, and this is something I presented to you also the last, um, in the last week here with the uh, three columns of profitable, rate, profitable trading, um, it makes sure that if the average winner is way bigger than the average loser, your so-called payoff ratio is, is um, extremely big um, or huge. It means that, that um, your risk of ruin, means your, your, your risk of, of going broke with your trading decreases massively. Okay, while it increases exponentially the moment you're trading here with a payoff ratio which is below one. Okay, so now, now it seems to work. Now let's look at the trading related example. So um, this was this was um, 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 uh, input here from a, from or feedback from a participant of a, of a trading show. I was I was speaking. And um, he said, well, this is great. It's, it's just really great since it perfectly shows why, um, why this is definitely a topic and something people have to overcome when, when they really want to, to become profitable trading. But nevertheless, I don't think that people can really understand what you're talking about when you're playing games with them. But you have to make sure that you show to them a chart um, or, or a trading-related example so that they understand what you're talking about. And I, I, I thought about this for, for two minutes and I thought, yeah, well, this is just great feedback since this is exactly true. Some of you might now say, well, I don't get what this game has to do with trading. And therefore, I prepared the following. So it's also in, in German, but um, it's, it's um, easily uh, to, to understand. As you can see here, you have a sequence of higher highs and higher lows. And um, you're going long here when the market breaks to new highs. So it's uh, here building up a long position. And then the winner, um, you, don't, you just don't feel it. At the end, okay, you feel it. Something which proves true if you trade the markets with real money, well, you feel comfortable when the market moves your direction. Nevertheless, as already said, the moment the market retraces, which is necessary, uh, necessary in a market um, here when you when you trade a trend where you say well I need a pullback that the trend structure with higher highs and higher lows in this case can develop um, the 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 fear or no the 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 pain you you feel here when you lose the gains which are not um, even um, uh, um, uh, realized gains, but it's 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 floating wins. Okay, it's floating winnings here. Um, you you really you, you it it feels devastating. It makes you it makes you sick to your stomach, and you're getting you're getting you're getting uh, um, into pure anger mode. So you're going on pure tilt, you say in poker, when you see those winnings disappear here once again. And um, so what happens is you go along here, you see the market move your direction, and then you feel the pain. And what happens is that here you can't take you can't take this 
this this pain anymore and you just say okay well I'm just cashing in the ships here um, at least a small small profit no not a not a, a break even stop out here or having the risk if you haven't put your stop to break even of getting stopped out here um, so you, you just cash in the chips here and then you see that the market does exactly that similar to this structure here coming high or going higher from there so this is the good example where you say okay I cash in the chips here for a small or you book a, a small profit but just imagine what happens the moment the market does not go this way but probably breaks out here it's a fake out and then the market starts to move down hmm. well what you usually do is you just take out the stop here it works as kind of shadow stop let's call it so you're not getting stopped out since it fears it fears you it really is tremendously um, it fears you that that you will that you will face loss here and that's one of the reasons why you take out the stop here and then you let the loser run while you cash in the ships too early here um, and this is exactly which was shown here with this example so okay so you get right here at the 900 euros so you're not capable of taking the pain any longer so that's why you're cashing the chips and uh, that's exactly game one you're playing here while the moment here um, you lose and the market and market moves against you what you do is you say okay I hope that it will turn around some sometimes it has to turn around uh, some sometimes it has to turn around if it's a trend structure if you're trading the FX markets I mean well rather sooner than later probably and after um, um, a currency devalued too heavily let's say um, you you have to wait for uh, or you, you can bet that the, that the um, um, central bank will come up step up and say okay we'll just, we'll somehow try to stabilize our currency um, something you can definitely bet on why well you, you have to, to, to understand that the moment the currency devalues more and more and more um, you have to uh, you have to um, 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 take more of your currency to for example import um, goods like oil or something which means you import inflation if people do not have more money in their uh, in their pocket here and they have to nevertheless pay more for for uh, daily goods they need to uh, to have a um, to, to fulfill their their living standards well then you get trouble from a political perspective for example so people um, they will get furious they will say well what what what's going on here um, what what's going on here um, uh, I, I don't get anything for my money anymore I have to work more and more and more and more to to somehow hold my living standard that's something where it gets political and where a central bank steps up and says okay we do something to somehow stabilize the currency so you will some somewhere in the future something will happen and the market will turn the question is are you still alive then so if you're trading too big and if you're highly leveraged here well you won't afford this um, so you can hope that the market turns around but the moment shortly before the market might turn around and this is also a personal experience a personal experience not from my personal trading but from from clients doing and behaving exactly like that um, saying okay I hope I hope I hope I hope I hope at the end they get the margin call since there's no money in the account anymore and then soon after this the market turns around and uh, the trade would have generated a profit um, and this is something um, which is which is uh, something you you may have seen already in your trading so it's nothing really special um, it's it's something you you might have seen but right uh, right now you may say well this makes sense so the, the the feelings I had back then I didn't get what they mean but they're they are human this is something something completely and make um, completely fine and and, and 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 making perfect sense to me and is there something I can do about this something we'll cover um, in a few minutes so first of all we I want to introduce to you something I, I've called the four cases and um, the following here this 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 chart is based on Kahneman's best-selling book thinking fast thinking slow um, which is something I highly recommend um, as probably one if not the best trading book out there and the funny thing is it's not even about trading okay so if you want to read something really great about trading read this book thinking fast thinking slow um, if some Germans are in this event right now it's schnelles denken langsames denken okay you just have to google it it's it's a best-selling book and um, I read it twice and I still I still read it so I, I, I from time to time I just flip through it and in this in this book there is this um, um, table here 
which is um, quite interesting since it's something which is um, here showing to us once again the case of losing uh, what's what's happening um, here during this game but there's also the case of winning and um, there is um, a difference between high probability sure best if you want where you say well something like for example uh, the SMB will um, um, will defend the, the pack at 120 and your Swiss franc obviously it wasn't a sure bet at all as my uh, some might might have might have felt the hard way I'm trading it aggressively um, I'm long but there, first of all, I have to say there is no such thing as a sure bet. But what people usually do is they say, oh, there's a high probability. Let's say um, in the morning meeting today, for example, I in the German audience, to the German audience, I presented something um, that was a cyclical, a seasonal pattern here in Aussie US dollar, which is um, coming into play in around two weeks, it should be. So it's the 30th or 31st of, of March. And um, the probability for the last 22 years that Aussie USD going long from the, I think, 31st of March till the 14th of April, I think, so around two weeks. Um, the probability uh, for this pattern to, to, to repeat here, um, or, or no, the, the, the probability that, that it happened during the last 22 years was that um, in 86% of the cases, Aussie dollar during these two weeks in the last 22 years made an average 104 pips and lost on average 52. So in 80, 18 cases out of 22, the market gained 104 and lost 52. Okay, so if I now tell you that there's a high probability and say the probability is a, over 80%, you might say, okay, it's a sure bet. It's nearly 100%. Yes, just, you just round it up. As you may round something down, if I say, well, the probability of, of, of having a losing trade um, is 10%, you say, well, 10% is nothing. So. Um, I, I don't lose on this trade, okay? So something I'll call a, a sure bet here in this case. So in the case of winning, um, this means uh, you, you usually feel something which says you have a 90%, 95% chance of winning, um, of winning to win, of winning 10,000. Oh, sorry, the to win is, is wrong there. So you have a 95% chance of winning 10,000 euros, okay? Now the question comes, and answer this question for you, do you go for a break, in this case to you, no, do you, do you go for a break of crucial level um, to get another 10,000 euros? So um, betting on a significant break on the up or on the downside, something where you have a trade on and the market is pushing against this level and now you wonder, hey, do I want to stay in this trade? So since I somehow have the feeling that if the market goes above or breaks below this level, um, it will run another, let's say, 100 pips here and making me another 10,000 euros. So you could somehow double uh, the amount you already made here by waiting for a break. You, you don't necessarily know this for sure. That's something um, um, we have, to, we have to, to, to bring up here, okay? But nevertheless, um, have you had this case in your trading? And if you had, were you willing to go for the break or did you did you say a cash in the chips here? Um, most of the time people do not go for this for this break here and wait for a further um, 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 for a further move in their direction. But usually they cash in the chips and afterwards they start to to feel frustrated since they didn't stay in the trade. Sometimes the frustration grows um, um, so huge that they start to say, okay, now I have to get in back and, and then they start to yeah, overtrade, trade scenarios which do not coincide with their trading approach at all and lose some of the money they um, um, made earlier, sometimes losing all of it, sometimes losing not just all of it but losing even more than that. Um, and, and this is something which is, um, yeah, which, is, which is really interesting to say here. So in the case of winning, there is this, this usual feeling the moment you have this high probability, sure bet feeling um, where you say, well, right now I'm not willing to take uh, this risk. And this is a classic example of loss aversion. You just want to avoid that you fail since 95% is not 100%. And it's something you know. Okay, in the case of winning, you know this, and you you say, okay, well, I just don't want to risk this amount of money here and more anymore. 
Um, I had 10,000 once, it hits this level. If it pulls back, I probably lose another 2,000. Well, 2,000 is not good. You started to, to think in terms of money. You say, oh, hmm, 2,000 2000 euros, I can buy a nice present for for my, my fiance or something like this. So for my wife, um, in, in this case, it's, uh, yeah, this is this is a classic example of loss aversion here in a in a high probability um, environment. The case of losing, um, you have the five percent chance of losing ten grand, and you feel the loss even though it's unlikely. Okay, so it's it's the complete opposite here in this case. So as you can see, ninety five and five percent they sum up to one hundred. Um, so you 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 have a chance of losing ten thousand, and you feel the loss even though it's unlikely. And you, your tendency is to fast profit taking or not taking the chance at all. Um, so there were several probably such such um, chances in the in the uh, in the in the near uh, past here. Let's say um, going along gold, for example, yesterday on the Fed, I consider it to be um, um, a good risk reward going along here with the stop. Then I think it was below 1,180 and, and just betting on a huge push back. Of 1,200. It was also a good bet on the NFPs last Friday already. Same thing on the T notes, for example. Um, I'm not saying that it was clear, but it somehow, if you looked at the at the developments here in the market and how they behaved before and how aggressively they priced in the chances of um, of, of 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 a rate hike here and even more hikes to come in the next months. Well, I have to say that. In this case, somehow it was a good risk reward. Nevertheless, some might have said, well, there's a, still a chance, which is probably significantly below 50%, but it's a chance of, of losing this trade, not losing 10 grand, but losing on this trade, so I'm not taking it. Um, this is exactly the same opposite. So it's the same metal, but you look at the, at the other, other side of it. Um, on the other hand, the case of winning, so a small probability, it's a risky bet. Um, you have five, a 5% five chance of winning 10,000. It's similar, let's say, to playing Lotto, for example, and you go for it, right? You usually do this. So especially if I ask um, a man, I, I, can, I can bet that most of them will answer this question with yes. Uh, and, and by the way, in my case, it's two. So I'm, in this case, I'm a little gambler. Uh, I'm a little gambler. Um, and uh, it's nevertheless, and this is something I have to say, um, it's okay since... It's not just that what I what I wrote here. It's okay, especially for men, because men will always be little kids and and, and play around a little. No, the main reason here is um, it's um, it's an asymmetrical uh, risk you 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 have here. So you have a small risk on and have potential of of gaining a lot for it. Um, so it's very similar to um, something which was introduced by Tony Saliba in the book Market Wizards here from Jack Schwager. Um, that was or is another um, book I, I highly recommend to everyone who's um, listening to, to this right now. And he was building some kind of, of, he called it explosion positions. And this was exactly what he was betting on. So what he said was, there's a small risk, uh, I'm sorry, there, there's, a, there's a small chance of winning with this trade. So for example, buying um, out of the money puts or out of the money calls um, in, 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 in when, when, when trading options here. But if, they win, they win big, and that's exactly what um, what 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 Saliba was 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 making a topic here, and which is I think completely fine since at the end in trading it it comes down to exactly that: cutting your losers short, making your winners big means you have an asymmetrical uh, risk here, small risk, high chance, and so it's it's something asymmetrical risk reward. So, sorry, um, and. Uh, this is this is completely fine. On top of that, as already said, um, men are always men. Uh, men are always or will always be little kids and and like to gamble. So <laughs> I think it's okay. Um, and then there's the case of losing. A small probability uh, with a risky bet, you have a 95% chance of losing 10,000. So you're nearly yes, you're you're definitely most of the time 95 times out of 100 you lose the 10 grand and um, you know, say, okay, I put my stop here. If it gets hit, I'm done. I, I lost 10 grand. And then something weird starts. And you say, well, but the market dropped so much already. It has a good chance that it comes back. You start to hope. And then you say, well, and on top of that, I already lost 10 grand. If I lose another 10, well, okay, it's not cool, but how likely is this? I mean, the market dropped already that much here. And now... 
I, I bet everyone who listens to this right now had had this thinking and was afterwards probably thinking, what the heck did I do there? Why did I think that way? And it was game number two. It was option B. You just hoped. Um, you just started hoping. You hoped that the market will turn around, that, that, the, that the loss you face um, maybe somehow um, 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 some, 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 somehow you, it's not a realized loss, you know, and uh, you start to throw um, good money after bad. Let's say that's that's I think the perfect way to 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 um, to keep um, or to to to, um, to to explain this. And this is something um, which is perfectly showing which four cases you have to to fight with. And while in case of winning, here this is something where I have to say, okay, I from time to time, and if the markets allow it, I'll definitely try to go for a break of such a crucial level to make sure that the payoff ratio is uh, is is uh, increased here in my trading to make sure that sometimes I might get this these 10, 10 grand extra for taking the risk here. Um, on the other hand, you have to say in the case of losing, sometimes this is completely fine. If you say, well, there is a there is a small chance of losing, but nevertheless take the take the take the uh, bet since it's worth it. It has a positive expected value. Um, something as I already said, as gold T notes future, for example, yesterday with the Fed. Um, here, this is something where the gambler comes through where you say, okay, I have a small chance of winning, nevertheless, the payoff is so great that I'm definitely willing to take it. So all these three cases are completely fine. Avoid this one. Just do it. Just avoid this one here. Case of losing and small probability. Um, in this case, just take the loss, as already um, um, emphasized here in game two, option A. Okay, take the loss, even though you might say, well, it's 900 euros, and I have 10% chance of that I'm not losing at all, and if I if I not, I just lose 100 euros extra. Well, I can definitely tell you, um, it won't stop at 1,000, but somewhere around 1,500 to 1,800 to 2,000 probably, um, you will then um, and pull the trigger and say, okay, now I have to, to get rid of this, this position here. But all in all, the personal, the personal um, experience here is that you usually do not keep it at 1,000. And that's one of the reasons why you say, okay, cash, cash it in. I mean, it, it hurts, it may hurt, but this is something also, which is, this is something um, um, true, it's also true. Um, once you get rid of a losing position, it frees your mind. It is awesome. It's it not. It's not freezing your mind, but it frees it. Okay, you you're you're free afterwards, and uh, you you can start um, thinking again. So the moment um, this is something also you have to to make sure have a clear plan, a game plan. The moment you start trading, you you enter a trade. Have a clear plan where to get out, and have a clear plan where to take profit and everything. If you start to think about where to put your stop, especially after you enter the trade, you'll definitely make a big mistake. I, I bet you will make a big mistake um, since you will uh, be under fire here and there will be adrenaline and you will be under stress and you have no real chance to think clear uh, and, and, and straight. And this is one reason you have to have a game plan since the plan allows you to say, okay, when I do this, I do this, then I do this, then I do this, then I do this. And placing your stop with an adequate position size, um, it's, it's at the beginning of this plan. Um, and, and this is something uh, which, is, which is especially true here in this case, since if you, if you get this, 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 this chart here and you will uh, find yourself here, you're nearly done. You have no chance of being profitable with the trading if you start to throw good money after bad. Um, now, the question at the end of this presentation is how do you profit with this knowledge in your trading? Then this is exactly what we are what we are planning to do here and what we want to achieve. So first of all, if you have a winning streak, you gain self-confidence, completely normal I'd say, and you feel, probably you feel invulnerable or you feel as if you're king of the world. So what you could, what you should do is induce rational thinking here. So, or put it the other way around, find actively reasons why the next trade could fail. This is called so, this is the so-called pre-mortem analysis. So why could the next trade fail? It makes sure 
that um, you will definitely never, ever, 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 ever trade without a stop anymore um, since, um, well, you know that you could fail with this trade, which is completely normal. If you find 10 reasons why a trade um, um, could go wrong, well, you will definitely place a stop and say, okay, this is the max um, amount I won't lose. Nevertheless, you have to, it's a, it's a thin line, since the more reasons you find that you're, um, that you're um, 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 that you could lose on this trade, the more you might overthink your um, 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 you might overthink your your or overrule your trading setup here and say, okay, I plan to go long. I have 20 reasons to go short now. Well, probably I go short. <laughs> um, this this is not meant with this. Okay, so you have it's a thin line, and you you have to 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 find this thin line. It's not easy, but it's definitely something which will avoid in the long run that you're trading without a stop loss and let losers run. If you work with a stop and you take out the, the loss, you take the loss here um, at a certain point, not here, but at a certain point, well, it makes sure that you can uh, cut your losers short. Plus, on top of that, you won't fear losers anymore since you know it can go wrong. And then if it, if it happens, it doesn't hurt that much anymore. It still hurts, but nevertheless, it, it's not hurting that much. Um, if you grasp the concept of expected value, um, then your understanding of trading based on cognitive biases will result in bad results in the long term and increasing your chances of going broke. Um, so I'm not going into too much details here since this is a topic for itself, especially in terms of risk and money management. But um, what you should definitely do is you should formulate a trading plan and a clear idea of what you plan to trade. And then you test it, you back test it. And then you see how it behaves under certain market conditions, not just um, saying, I plan to trade the long um, um, trends here um, or short trends or both. I plan to trade trends in general. And then you test it in a trend environment. I mean, you have to see how it behaves in market, which are markets which are ranging, for example. And um, if it works, it's still profitable, even though the market conditions are not favorable. Uh, it's a so-called robust um, approach. And then... If you have a positive expected value with this approach, so meaning, meaning that the hit rate multiplied with the average winner and um, subtract with the um, loss rate multiplied with the average loser, which um, if this is bigger zero, then you're profitable. Um, this is meant with, with when I'm saying expected value is positive. Um, and you have a risk of ruin, which is zero. This is something on top of that. You can, you can uh, simulate this with Monte Carlo simulations. Then just go with it. Okay, then just go with it. And if you have such a plan and you, you start to trade this plan without um, 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 listening to these, uh, to these, let's call them um, um, inner voices saying, uh, well, hope a little more, the market will turn around. But if you just go with your approach, well, nothing will happen to you anymore, let's say. Okay, so the, the, the approach itself could turn unprofitable and you have to adopt it, that's definitely true. But if you have a clear plan, you have a clear um, way and a clear, a good idea of what you're doing. If you have this idea of what you're doing, then you're um, definitely in a position where those cognitive biases do not become a topic anymore. And um, then on top of that, something which is um, based on my personal experience is a huge topic. Stop fighting writing your strategy down. Stop fighting um, against yourself writing your trades down and then having a trading journal. Um, most people do this to avoid to get a result showing them that they're doing something wrong. So just imagine you have, you, you think about your, your trading skill and, and then how great you trade and then you write it down you find out, well, obviously I'm losing money. Um, at the end you could look at your account balance but sometimes people just ignore it. Okay, they have so many positions on that they just ignore their, 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 their account balance, no, no joke, really. Um, and um, don't, don't fear this, okay? And don't, don't fight this, 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 uh, this, this um, really great opportunity to, to really um, write down what you're doing in your trading and how you behave. Um, it's, it's definitely kind of self-defense. If you say, well, I, I avoid pain here, um, writing everything down, which could show me that I'm, that I'm a sucker in this game. But um, instead making it, um, it, it is something narrative, make it something positive, okay? So making mistakes and knowing them 
gives you a chance, and this is something you have to really understand, that gives you a chance to change something and get a positive result in the long run. So it's, it's something really positive if you write it down and if you, if you visualize it and if you, if you see, okay, this is an obvious mistake, now let's do something about this. Um, and so stop fighting, fighting against this, this tendency because of self-defense reasons or whatever to say I write down every trade. But write it down and analyze it. Understand what you're writing down. That's another thing. So some people might say, I have a trading journal, and, but they don't really know what they're writing down there. Oh, I've seen the professional trader in a webinar um, who's, who wrote down, this is my entry, this is my stop, this is my initial risk, blah, 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 blah. And, <laughs> and they just do the same without really knowing why they are doing this. That's something you have to definitely understand. But there are certainly ways which you can, you can, you can go which you can choose, which could increase massively the chances of being profitable in your trading. And um, so behavioral economics, behavioral finance is a very great topic here. Um, and, and if you understand why you're doing what you're doing, you do a first step in changing it, or you have the first step, you have the first step done, um, uh, um, or you find a way what you're doing, or you will, you ha will have to find a way, let's put it that way, you will have to find a way um, how to change a flaw in your thinking process, for example. Um, okay, and uh, yeah, that's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed this, this webinar. Um, so next week we will um, have a look at the market open in the US markets and then have a, have a detailed look here um, um, at the markets and how to trade it with the mini terminal from, from JFD. So we, uh, there's, there's this really great tool um, which you can use and it's uh, in, in, uh, in this, uh, how's it called? Um, MetaTrader, <laughs> that's the platform, so it's in the MT4 Plus environment. Um, yeah, and so uh, that's it from my end. I hope you enjoyed the, the webinar, and I uh, wish you um, a nice evening, and uh, talk to you again then in the morning meeting tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. GMT um, with uh, some insights on uh, what markets are, are doing and hopefully being able of formulating some trading setups. So have a nice evening. Um, happy trading. Watch your stops. See you, and bye-bye.